Hello there and welcome to devlog number two for my PlayStation 1 style horror game. I'd like to start this one by just saying a massive thank you to everyone that watched devlog number one. When I made that video I had no idea that it would do any kind of views whatsoever and I've been uh, really pleased with the number of views it's got and also the reception, the really kind comments and the encouragement that I've had from people. So thanks for that. And it has inspired me to keep this project going. And so here we are with devlog number two, where I'm gonna share with you my journeys in trying to dial in the art process to make sure that my assets, my 3D models that I create are gonna look as authentically PlayStation 1 as I want. So I decided to start somewhere small and I wanted to have some like street lights for my community to go along the side of the road. So I thought they'd be a really good place to start. Quite simple and a good place to really try things out. So I began by just using Maya to model them. Really straightforward low poly stuff. Started with a cylinder and a cube. Added a few extrusions. No big deal at all. Then some UV mapping was needed, but really basic, straightforward stuff, just laying it out and making sure that the texel density was pretty consistent. The bit that I really needed to concentrate on came with making the textures though, and I had already decided that I wanted to use Substance 3D Painter for this because it can create really good textures really quickly, but I hadn't tried this for any retro style graphics before, so that was something that I needed to really try out. So I just threw on some like dirty rusty looking black paint for most of it. I added some like gold paint detail which you see on a lot of uh, street lights here in the UK uh, in like parks and places like that. And I did create two different materials for the light part and the painted part so that I could uh, mess with the, uh, the emissive attributes when I got into one real engine. And that all looked okay but what really made this an ideal part of the art process for me was when I discovered that there was a way to include baked lighting in Substance Painter, uh, which took me a, a little minute to figure out, but if I just toggle it on and off here uh, using the layer, you can see what a big difference it makes and it looks really good. The next thing I needed to do though was figure out how I was going to reduce the resolution and restrict the number of colours in a way that I liked. And I found that that wasn't really something I could do quickly in Substance Painter. So I exported my textures out of there and brought them into Photoshop, where it's actually a really quick and painless process. So the first thing I did was just reduce the resolution and I found that 256 by 256 was good for this. And I just made sure to set the uh, filtering to nearest neighbor to get those nice sharp pixels. And then I went into image and mode and just changed the color to indexed color, where I can set how many colors I want it to use and it will just look at the palette and reduce the colors down to that. And I think I chose something like 16. And you can also turn on dithering here and add a dithering pattern, which again really fits in with that PlayStation 1 era look. So I turned that on and then just saved that out and it, it looked pretty good. So then I could take my model and my newly created texture into Unreal Engine. And as you can see, it looks pretty good. I've used my master material and just swapped in the text that I created. So I'm still getting all the vertex snapping effects and all that good stuff. And that looks pretty good. And when uh, I have a little run around the level and you can see, I think it fits in quite well. I think it's adding to the look. So we've got the pixelated grass uh, and the pixelated path and that all looks good. And I think the uh, street light blends quite nicely. I've just added a basic point light to it as well, just to make it look nice. And I think that's come out pretty well. So just a short one this time, not massive amounts of progress, but something that's quite important in moving forward. In the next one, I might look at modeling some more uh, important assets for this, or I may start looking at creating the custom character that's gonna be needed. I don't know which way I'm gonna go yet. It'll be a surprise for all of us when we get there. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you'll keep up with this series if you're finding it interesting. Let me know in the comments what you think, or if there's anything that you think I'm overlooking or that you'd like to hear more about. And I will see you hopefully in the next one.